Crosshairs are a big part of Counter-Strike, and in many ways they affect how we play. But which crosshair is the best, and which gives you the best aim, spray, and more? Let's find out. What's going on, Pro Guides fam? I'm Boggs, and today we'll be talking about crosshairs, and more specifically, how they impact your aiming. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to crosshairs, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing we have to talk about is color. Color is something that a lot of people generally see as a personal preference, but it really is something you should think about. A lot of people generally like green, as it's a pretty standard color across games, but arguably it's actually not the best. With a lot more green maps coming out such as Ancient and Cache, it can be quite hard to spot at times. And there's honestly nothing that makes green really stand out. Sure, for most maps it won't actively hinder you, but there's definitely better options out there. The next option you might want to avoid though is Cyan. Cyan or blue is a color that's like green, quite popular, but honestly, it shouldn't be. Cyan is a color that's quite easy to lose track of, because obviously it isn't very distinct, but especially on maps like Nuke where blue is a very common color, it's not that great to have. Of course that doesn't mean that you can't be successful with green or cyan, because of course you can, but there are just some better options out there. One of them being yellow. Yellow is the color that we as humans tend to see first, as it's bright and very noticeable. And the same philosophy applies here with crosshairs. Another advantage of yellow is that you can again see it pretty much anywhere. Even though there are many bright maps out there such as Dust2 and Mirage, yellow is still very clearly visible and will always be easily spottable. The only exception to the rule is being when you use very heavy effects through, for example, Nvidia Freestyle or Digital Vibrance. If that's you, perhaps yellow isn't the pick and you could instead consider red. Red, like yellow, is another color that really does stand out and you'll be able to spot just about anywhere. The only real problem that red has is that it stands out so much that for some it could be really straining to look at. At least for myself, I know there are times when red is just a tad bit too much and I'll see myself switching back to green or cyan to relax my eyes a little bit. Speaking of the colors though, let's quickly go over our question of the day. Today's question being, what color crosshair do you use? I personally have been using yellow for the longest time now, and I'm a really big fan of it, but every now and then, I gotta go back to my roots and bring out the sign. I mean, don't we all? But what about you guys though? What color is your go-to? Make sure to drop it, and also your crosshair codes in the comments below, and then we'll see who has the best one. I'm really looking forward to it. With our question of the day out of the way, it's time to talk about the different types. Before we do that, I'd quickly like to say that crosshairs are quite personal, and the vast majority of it is a placebo. If you love to use a certain crosshair, it might still be better regardless of what we're about to say. So even if we bash your favorite crosshair, you can still use it if it works for you. The first crosshair type we're going to be talking about is the dot. Dot crosshairs are not very popular in the pro scene, but there is quite a lot of casual players that use it mostly because of Scream popularizing it early in his career. Even when Scream still played Counter-Strike though, at the end of his CS career he already moved away from it. And the only known pro that's still a hardcore dot supporter is Flusha, and he's not exactly known for his aim. The reason that so little pros use it is pretty simple, the dot crosshair is just not that practical. It's really easy to lose track of and spraying with it can be a complete nightmare. There's some people that feel really precise when using it and they feel like they only hit heads, but for the vast majority of people, it just doesn't really work. The dot crosshair is just way too inconsistent to be a consistent pick for many, and I'd advise to only really use it if you're really feeling it that day. If you are a fan of the dot though, you could consider using a cross dot hybrid. The cross dot hybrid is a crosshair that Simple has used for the majority of his career and many pros copied him. Simple is of course known for his great Pro Guides Master Course, which you can find over on our website. Use code FPS25 for 25% off, in which he teaches everything you need to know about CS, whether that's opping or mind games. But he's also quite well known for his great crosshair choice. The crosshair itself is pretty simple. It's a small regular crosshair with the four lines, but as an extra he also has a dot in the middle. Simple himself even uses the variant where the crosshair opens wider as he shoots, but there's also variations out there that are 100% static. The idea of this crosshair is pretty clever. It's a regular small crosshair, meaning that you won't have to worry about the inconsistencies of dots, but it also has the small dot allowing you to tap into that benefit of the potential extra precision. It truly is a great hybrid in between the two extremes of only a dot and just a regular cross. This crosshair is definitely one that I'd recommend, but I would highly advise playing around with the thickness and whether or not you want it to move. I personally do play the crosshair quite a bit, but when I do, I make sure to use some extra thickness, and I make sure that it's completely still, as I find a moving crosshair very distracting. The extra thickness is honestly just because of my resolution, as I currently play native 16x9, and Simple's crosshair really is meant for 4x3 stretch, where it's a bit more zoomed in. Just in general, the dot cross hybrid is one that's really good for anyone that loves to use the dot, but just doesn't trust it when it's alone. I personally find myself having a lot of success with it, at least if I set it to stat. 
Finally, except for the regular crosshair, there's actually one that's not very widely known, but is actually quite good. And that's the default crosshair set to static. Tarek is definitely the most notable pro that loves to use this type of crosshair, but also top aimers like Shroud used to use it back in the day. It kind of resembles the previously mentioned Dodd Cross Hybrid, but it's definitely something unique as well. If you've never given this style a try, it's definitely one that I'd recommend, and perhaps it might just become your new main. The default crosshair is definitely one that's underrated, and it really does not get a lot of love. The simple reason for that, though, has to do with the fact that the standard version isn't the most optimized one, and that makes many players instantly move away from it. I 100% admit that the default crosshair in Dynamic is absolute trash, but if you give the static one the benefit of the doubt and another shot at impressing you, you might just find your new main. At least I know that for quite a while, I did. The last type is the normal one, aka the good old irregular cross, and perhaps it's also the one that's used the most. In fact, I'm fairly certain it is. Don't let it fool you though, there's still a very wide variety of different cross crosshairs, as you can always still choose for different lengths, sizes, and gaps. So let's get a bit more in depth. The first thing we should talk about is the size of the gap, as ultimately it's going to dictate how you aim. When choosing a crosshair, you have to consider how you like to aim. Are you the type of person that wants to put the crosshair on the head of the opponent, as if you're putting a cross in their heads? Or are you more a fan of putting your opponent's head in the crosshair, as in filling in the gap between the lines? Back in the day, I used to play with the crosshair of my back then favorite pro player, Nothing, and he had a really big crosshair with quite a massive gap. That was fine, of course, but that didn't mean that I wasn't putting my crosshair on heads, but instead putting heads in between my crosshair, which really does have a different feeling. The best way to figure out what you prefer is honestly just to try both and run around in deathmatch seeing what you prefer. Of course, if you regret your decision, you can always switch later, so don't stress too much and just go with what you feel. After all, the crosshair gap is only as big a deal as you make it out to be, and if you don't let that bother you, you'll be fine either way. On the other hand, it does also mean that if you do let it get to your head, it can seriously hurt your performance regardless of if you made the right crosshair choice or not. Aside from the gap, you also have to consider size, although they do usually pretty much go hand in hand, as a huge gap with a small size and vice versa makes very little sense. For size at least, what I found the biggest impact it has on is spraying. I personally feel like my sprays are just so much better on a bigger crosshair, for the simple reason that I can clearly see what part of the pattern I'm on due to the massive crosshair, especially if I have outlines. Of course, there is a certain limit to where a crosshair just becomes a little bit too big, but you can take it pretty far. I used to definitely go around and troll people by having a huge meme crosshair, and although it was slightly harder to aim with, it really didn't hurt my performance all that much. I guess that also goes to show how crosshairs aren't really the end-all be-all, and the more important thing is doing the right things and making correct plays. So if you're struggling to rank up, perhaps you should also look past your crosshair and look for a coach to help you out instead. If you're interested, we have plenty of available coaches over on our website ready to help, and many of them even offer you month-long coaching packages that guarantee you to rank up. So ranking up and reaching the rank of your dreams is quite literally guaranteed. Of course, all of that is over on ProGads.com. Another important question regarding crosshairs, though, is of course whether you should use static or dynamic. I think it's pretty obvious what I think, because I'm not a big fan of anything randomly moving in what I used to aim, therefore I simply hate dynamic. But admittedly, there are some people that are successful with it. Honestly, I'd seriously recommend staying away from the style of dynamic that moves when you move, but the style that opens up when you spray is alright. I mean, it's hard to argue against when even the goat of Counter-Strike Simple himself is using it, right? I personally still only rarely use it, and even then, with only very limited success. But if you feel like you're spraying too much and want to focus on your first bullet accuracy, it just might be the right play for you. Alright, so to conclude, what is the best crosshair? Well, it's not really set in stone, but I'd recommend that you use a nice and clear color such as yellow, and you either use a regular cross crosshair or a cross dot hybrid, preferably with as little moving elements as possible. If you're feeling quirky, you could also consider bringing out that static default crosshair, and hell, even if you're not, it's still probably worth a try. That's gonna be it for now though, so hopefully you found yourself a brand new crosshair and are ready to farm with it. Or perhaps, you were already using the perfect one. You now understand why? You can find even more success with your newfound confidence. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Plus, when you do, make sure to ring that notification bell to stay up to date with more upcoming CSGO content. I wish you the best of luck in your ranked games, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.